you are clearly an expert in something I don't think too many people know about. So I think we got to start there, which is what in the world is a native parallel graph database? Yeah, that's a good question. We invented native parallel graph database technology. Basically, before Tiger Graph, nobody worked out a distributed graph database. We are the first company that created a fully distributed high performance graph databases. Native means we build everything from the ground up, from scratch, to optimize everything for graph data storage, graph data compression, memory allocation, CPU computation for graph data, and graph analytics. Parallel uh, is more than distributed, right? We can use many machines to do big data analytics, but also even on a single machine, we can use many CPUs, many CPU cores to do parallel processing to improve query performance and uh, do a lot of complex analytics. Otherwise, you would not be able to do it if uh, not doing parallel processing. So we're really excited. We are the first company that made the bigger breakthrough uh, in distributed and the parallel graph processing. So give me an idea of what it's been able to unlock because you know I think this is best told through an example. Like, hey, in the past, give me a data set that maybe just couldn't get computed. It would take too many resources, maybe too much infrastructure to, to figure out the answer. And then now if we have a parallel graph database, it can handle that, that computation. Do you have any examples like that? Yeah, I, I can give you two simple examples, right? So the first one is actually probably one of the most famous and the most profitable graph uh, algorithms called PageRank from Google, right? Before Google, there are many search engines. Google was not the first search engine, right? But Google used graph algorithm called PageRank to rank each website, each content. So when you search on Google, they give you the best recommendation, right? But the power really come from the graph analytics. So they have to look at how web pages link to each other, how important each website is, right? So they have to do this computation each iteration after each iteration. Before Google had their own internal graph processing system, no, nobody could do this type of work, right? So that's why Google becomes the dominant winner in search engine, right? Because they take advantage of the graph, graph engine they, they build in-house. The second example, is about the money transfer, right? Think about it just a one table. Person A transfer money to person B at this location, transfer this amount of money, right? A simple table, everybody can understand. Now you want to say, are there really bad guys? Professional group doing money laundry, right? So if you want to use traditional databases, like a relational database, you have to do what is called self-joins. You want to say if a person A is send the money to B, B send it to C, C send it to D, and then maybe many other accounts also do similar transfer through a few steps. Then a lot of people transfer money finally to one account or two accounts, right? So that could be a sign of money laundering. So with the traditional database, you cannot do this. You, you take your weeks to finish your you know, a report. Sometimes you cannot even finish because you don't know the pattern, right? It's also related to machine learning, AI, because you don't know how people are doing the money transfer through how many steps. So where, this is where graph can be the right, really the best tool. Uh, it's not just about the performance. If even you can write a, a, you know, a graph algorithm to solve the problem, right? With relational base, you cannot even write a SQL query to solve this anti-money laundry problem. Okay, I feel like I understand what you're saying. So let's let's double check my knowledge because I'm going to speak for people who maybe don't know what you're talking about. You can correct me if I'm wrong, all right? So a traditional database is going to contain, let's say, single records of structured or unstructured data. You can query it. It can find a record or a group of records, no problem. But where it does not and where it does break down is it doesn't understand how the data is in relation to other data inside the same database across databases. And so that's why you used your example of PageRank, which is actually trying to measure not what a single row or record of a website is, but what all the other rows and websites say 
about this single record, which is what how they created the page rank. Similarly to your money laundering example, if you were to look at a database of transactions, it's very hard to tell the relationship between transaction, the record on line one and the record on line one billion. But a parallel graph database is actually tracking and measuring the relationship between the actual rows of data to tell you these are the things that are interconnected and therefore possibly you have money laundering. Did I explain that correctly? Actually, yes. You explained it really well. And uh, graph analytics is really about the relationship, discovery, pattern match. You're right. Traditional database uh, are really good in storing data and getting them back, right? But if you want to connect the data points, get the insights, that's where graph database can do the best job for you. All right, so I need to call my university and they need to hook me up with a bachelor's at a minimum, bachelor's. <laughs> I feel like I understood it's a complex subject. When you think about what this does, you, you gave that prime example of, hey, it unlocked page rank. Hey, it unlocked possibly for financial institutions to identify money laundering activities in a very, very quick way. Give us an idea of how much time this cuts off. Because I think you mentioned it earlier, but like, why is the computational power so much faster and how much faster can it be? You made a comment about like, if you wanted to query a database to understand the relationship between financial transactions to see if a money laundering event was occurring, it would take, it sounds like a lot of time. And now you're saying this can happen instantly. Give us an idea of the difference and how much faster this accelerates information processing. For example, one of our bigger customers is a Jaguar Land Rover. They're in the supply chain business, right? They're making really good cars, yeah? So, uh, before Tigergraph, took them more than two weeks to do a key supply chain planning job. With Tigergraph, they cut down that time to about half an hour. Okay, wait, wait, two two weeks to 30 minutes. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and, and also keep this in mind. This is when your traditional database can do the job, right? But there are times your traditional database cannot even not do the job. For example, we have some of the biggest banks in the U.S. as a bigger customer, right? Some of those bigger banks use Tiger Graph, Graph Analytics to detect fraud, to find how many type of groups customers they have. This is really related to machine learning and the AI, right? Before Tiger Graph, they cannot even not do this job, right? So it's not just about the performance. Of course, the performance can change a lot of things, but also it's about Graph can help you to do things Previously, you cannot even get it done. IT Visionaries is powered by Salesforce platform and Dreamforce. Did you know all the very best Dreamforce sessions are available for free at salesforce.com slash plus. We recommend watching the platform and MuleSoft keynote to get the download on doing more with less in increasing efficiency with automation.